Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, the show where I show movies and we talk about them. Uh, last time we had kind of, sort of, not really a Thanksgiving triple feature. Um, we started with The Burning, which distinctly does not take place during Thanksgiving. But the other two movies are Thanksgiving movies, so uh, we, we just started with one that wasn't. I do want to say right up at the top here, I'm, I'm going to have like a, a channel announcement about it later, but you guys are the ones that actually watch this show, so I think you're the ones who actually care. This is going to be the last episode of Maps Movie Nights on this channel. I am starting a second channel, and henceforth all episodes of Matt's, Matt, Matt's Movie Nights are going to be on that second channel. Uh, watch for the second channel announcement coming soon. So The Burning is sort of a Friday the 13th cash-in. Um, came out in 81, just a year after the first Friday the 13th. Um, takes place at this uh, camp in New York? Maybe New Jersey, but I think New York. At, at the beginning of the movie, these campers are playing a prank on this, like curmudgeon old man who works at the camp where they like leave a skull with lights in its eyes next to his bed but he ends up knocking it over and setting his sheets on fire and he he gets burned like com completely disfigured by this fire and now he's out for revenge on those guys he, he tries to like buy a hooker and even the hooker is like no you're too ugly so he murders her and then he, he goes back to this camp and just starts murdering people at this camp. It's uh, it's a little unclear what the age range of the kids at this camp are. Because it, it's not like... Most of the characters are older people. They're, they're like in their late teens. So you think they're maybe like counselors? But there's never any like kids around. It's just these older counselors. So, uh, maybe it's just, like, a teen camp where the teens go and just, like, self-police. I mean, there's adults around, but, like, this is, this is a, a summer camp for teenagers, I guess. Uh, and, and Cropsy, the, the man who got burned to death, is running around killing them. This is one of the best slasher movies there is. Like, uh, I, I guess... If, if I were asked what, like, the ideal slasher is, it'd be The Burning. The Burning is the ideal slasher. That doesn't mean there aren't better slashers. I would definitely put something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre or the original Halloween above this. This is sort of the ideal because on the one hand... It has interesting characters, like I actually care about all the kids at this camp, which is not something I can say for a lot of slashers. A lot of slashers have really boring characters that I just do not care about. The Burning has very funny, very entertaining uh, campers, uh, the, uh, characters. They're, they're all very interesting, they all have their own unique little things going on, I, I enjoy seeing them around. And then on the other hand, it has really good kills. They're both very creative and extremely gory. This movie is super, super bloody. I, I, I say gory, mostly I mean bloody. It's not like realistic gore. It's just blood. Like, these people are just blood sacks. And I love any movie where the, the people are just blood sacks. <laughs> That's the type of shit I want to see in a movie. I want to see blood sex. You, you get stabbed, blood everywhere. You know, no, none of these internal organs, these these intestines, the guts, all the all the goopy stuff. Not into that. Blood, hell yes. Spray that shit everywhere. I swear to God, someone gets like their fingers cut off in this movie, and it's just blood. It's just tubes of blood. They aren't fingers. They're just blood sausages so yeah it, it good kills and good characters that's really all you need for a slasher to work and so few slashers get both of those things right 
Very few of them get one of those things right. Uh, shit like prom night, the characters are boring, everything that happens to them is boring, and then the kills are also boring. And it's like... <sighs> Like, I, I'm for, I'm more forgiving if I like the characters, and I'm more forgiving if there's good kills. You only really need one or the other to impress me that much. Uh, last Thanksgiving we looked at Blood Rage, which, uh, the characters aren't great outside of, like, the villain and his family. But, I don't know, it has fun, interesting kills, and that keeps me entertained, whereas... A lot of slasher movies really skimp out on the violence. Uh, I mean, I mean, even even like the original Halloween skimps out on the violence a little. Um, mostly, I think that's because the few times they show someone getting stabbed on screen, it doesn't look very good. So that might have been a technical decision on their part, but it's like. Give me some blood. Give me some people on screen deaths. You know, I am here to see people get killed. I don't want you to skimp out on people getting killed. So many horror movies are just so scared of showing you the people actually fucking dying. Not the burning, man. The burning's like, here it is. He's, these kids are getting fucking stabbed to death. You want to see Jason Alexander get killed by some gardening shears? Here it is. And on the other hand, so many horror movies are like, ah, people are just here to see the deaths. We don't have to put that much effort into the characters. Some of them even are like, ah, it's better if, like, the characters aren't that interesting or even are, are like, super obnoxious, so you want to see them die. And, like, an obnoxious character that you want to see die can be fun, but all of your characters being obnoxious... It, it, it gets really grating really fast. It's, it's difficult to watch. So, <laughs> quite contradictorily, you have these movies that are like... Like, oh, we don't have to put that much effort into the characters because people are only here to see the characters die. And then they don't even give the characters good deaths. It's like, come on, man. I'm not asking for much. It's a slasher movie. Give me some interesting characters and some interesting deaths. That's all I want. The Burning does it. The Burning does it perfectly. So this was written by Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> this this was uh, the, the Weinstein brothers' introduction to film. This this was the first film e the Weinstein brothers worked on. They I think they both wrote it. At least one of them wrote it. And then both of them produced... Okay, no, only... Only Harvey Wein... Wait, nope, nope. Screenplay by Bob Weinstein. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, both Weinstein brothers wrote this movie. And then Harvey Weinstein produced it. It wasn't directed by him. It was directed by Tony Malum, but... Um... Weinstein's not much of a director. He's more of a producer. Um, I almost hate to say a good producer. He's certainly a producer that lets his directors do what they need to. So, I appreciate his work as a producer. I don't so much appreciate the, 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 you know... The stuff Harvey Weinstein is known for now. But he, he wrote this along with several other people, including his brother Bob Weinstein, who, uh, to my knowledge, Bob Weinstein's biggest crime is just defending Harvey Weinstein. But um, he, he wrote it, and it's one of the few movies he's actually written because he's much more well-known as a producer. Several cast members you'll recognize from before they were famous, namely Jason Alexander. Jason Alexander's the big one. Uh, uh, George Costanza, for those of you playing the home game. George Costanza's in this movie. Basically playing, like, the teenage version of George Costanza. Like, it, this could be a Seinfeld prequel, except he gets killed, so... No, it couldn't be. But if he didn't get killed, this, this is probably what George was like as a teen...
Uh, Fisher Stevens is in this. Um, known for Short Circuit. Known for... Shit. Was he in the Super Mario Bros. movie? I think he was in the Super Mario Bros. movie. And uh, uh, Holly Hunter, although Holly Hunter is barely in it. Jason Alexander's is like a pretty major character, as is um, uh, Fisher Stevens. Holly Hunter's not in a lot of the movie, but she is in this. Um, known for Raising Arizona. Ah, oh, God, was she Mrs. Incredible? Uh, Elastigirl? Hmm. Yeah, okay. I was right. Holly Hunter was Elastigirl in The Incredibles. She's in this movie very briefly. Minor role, but she's in the movie. Yeah, I, I really like The Burning. It's a very fun movie. It's... I, I, I had a phase where I sort of was like... I was really into slasher movies... But I just got so bored by so many of them, and, and the burning is just that, like, thank you, this is why I like slashers, okay? You, you want to understand why I like slashers, it's because I want more movies like The Burning. Make more movies like The Burning. I love it. Uh, after that, we watched another Thanksgiving slasher, Home Sweet Home. Because the three Thanksgiving slashers I showed last year sure weren't the only ones. Uh, th there's five that I've been able to find. If there's another Thanksgiving slasher out there, I don't know about it. But, uh, so, so far as I know, it's just Blood Rage, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving 3, Home Sweet Home, and Madman. Home Sweet Home is the story of an escaped serial killer who shows up at, like, I guess his old family home, but his his family's not there anymore. I think because he killed them. I don't know if they say. Because there's no, like, y usually with that type of thing, the movie would start with, like, ooh, here's the killer, like, killing people. This is why he got sent to jail. And then... Uh, after, like, the opening credits, then it'd be like, oh no, he's escaped from jail. But this movie just starts with him escaping from jail. Like, any backstory is like, nah, no, nah, we don't need to know about that. But yeah, like, he, he killed his family, so his family home is now not owned by his family. So they're, they're renting it out to, f to some people for Thanksgiving. They, they come out there and they're planning this big Thanksgiving meal. And, you know, the crazy ki serial killer shows up and starts killing them. Um, it's cheap. It's really cheap. And that does give it a certain level of charm. Uh, I, I do think there is some really good violence in this movie in spite of its l obvious low budget. It's a fun little movie. It's a charming little movie. There are certainly, like, bigger budget slasher movies that are nowhere near as entertaining. Um, I don't know that it's particularly good, but it's, it's fun. It's a good time, you know? <laughs> if you're, if you're throwing on Thanksgiving slashers, this is definitely better than Thanksgiving 3. Probably better than Thanksgiving as well. I, I would still probably recommend Blood Rage and Madman over this film, but, you know, it's fun. It is what it is. There is a child in the movie, and they continue to imply that, like, ooh, the child's gonna get murdered. There's even, like, a ooh, oh no, the child is dead moment. But then it's like, oh no, she was just eating cherry pie. That's, it, it looks like she's covered in blood, but no, she was, she was eating cherry pie. Ha ha, the child's not gonna die. And I'm like, damn it, kill the fucking child. I just want to see the child fucking die. I'm, t t t I like child murder in films. Like, why, why do children always have plot armor? It bothers me. I want to see the child die. Like, one of the characters is, like, flirting with the the housemaid except the housemaid is mexican and does not speak english so he's like trying to romance her even though they don't speak the same language and you're just like 
Dude. Dude, like, come on. She doesn't know what you're saying. She doesn't understand you. It's directed by Neddy Pina. Uh, the only film he's ever directed. Which, hmm, I don't know. I think he could have done more. This is a little disappointing that this is all he did. Um... I mean, he is on other projects. He was, like, an editor and a cinematographer for some other stuff, but this is the only thing he ever directed. And he also, he edited this, he produced this, he did a lot of work on this. A, a lot of the cast is not particularly noteworthy. Vanessa Shaw is in there, and she has done some other stuff. Uh, she was in Hocus Pocus. She wasn't one of the main witches, but she was a pretty major character in Hocus Pocus. I don't know, I don't, I don't have that much to say about Home Sweet Home. It's interesting, it, it definitely is a unique and charming film, just sort of for the way that it was made, but... I don't know, uh, most, most of what's interesting about it is just that it's this sort of... It's a fun, low-budget slasher flick. You kind of know what you're getting into if you, if you, you know low-budget slasher flicks, but it's fun. It's a fun time. If you're throwing on some Thanksgiving slashers for your friends, eh, yeah, home sweet home. It's fun. I enjoy it. Which I guess brings us to the final movie of the night, Madman. Now, Madman is weird because it takes place at a Thanksgiving summer camp. I don't get it. It's a, it's a summer camp, but it's in November. It's, it's kids at a summer camp in November. Lore of the campfire, telling of his horror. Lost in the woods with madman and the stars. I am not a good singer, but for some reason, the Madman Mars theme is right in my range. This is the only song I can sing well. Even then, my, my voice is killing me right now, so it might not have sounded as good as I had wanted it to. I am very disappointed the Madman Mars theme is only one verse. It's it's a good song. You know, it, it doesn't match up with, like, the ballad of ha Harry Warden from My Bloody Valentine, though. So, Madman is the story of Madman Mars, a crazy lumberjack who murdered his family and... Uh, returns anytime, anytime, like, someone says his name too loud out in the woods. Like, if you, if you start talking about Madman Mars, he'll appear. Um, so, you know, this, uh, a camp counselor is telling the story of Madman Mars, which sounds like a good way to summon him. Maybe he assumes Madman Mars isn't real, but... Oh no, he is, and he's here to kill all of us. So, um, after Friday the 13th came out, the producers of this movie went looking for, like, a spooky New Jersey urban legend that they could convert into, like, a, a Friday the 13th-esque movie, and they, they found the story of Cropsy, uh, the... the New Jersey madman who haunts the woods. Um, and so they, they wrote a script around that and they started auditioning people for it, but people came into audition for it and they're like, hey, wait, I, I think I auditioned for a film just like this a couple weeks ago. Uh, uh, because The Burning is also based on the Cropsy legend. And, and much more blatantly than Madman is, Although I'm given to understand the first draft of Madman was a lot more Cropsy-centric, and then they found out about The Burning. The Burning definitely had a bigger budget. This had money behind it that Madman didn't. And they're like, oof, we really don't want to compete with that. So they sort of switched it up just enough that no one would be like, oh, you just stole this from The Burning. Um, they're both based on the same story, and that's maybe why this takes place in winter, in, in November, because they don't want you to think it's a summer camp. It's not a summer camp, guys. It's totally different from The Burning. I, I do think it says something about their respective popularity 
that The Burning has a Scream Factory release and Madman has a Vinegar Syndrome release. Also, I, I neglected to mention this, The Burning was actually one of the video nasties, so this is another video nasty on the board for us. And Home Sweet Home, I believe, was one of the Class 3 video nasties. So, uh, not one of the big 72, but it, it did get its day in court. How many video nasties does that make for this show? Because we're about to do one more. I, there's a new, there's another one, like, two episodes from now, but... Who? let me think. Witch Who Came From The Sea, Night of the Demon, Evil Dead, we did a whole triple feature of them. So, seven. I believe we're at seven video nasties. Might be wrong about that, but I think we're at seven. So, we still got a ways to go. That's only, uh, 10% of the video nasties. I'm not gonna show all of them. We'll probably top out around 13. <laughs> Anyways, Madman, um, it's fun. Like I was talking about earlier, if you got good kills in the movie, I don't care that much about the characters, and the characters in this are not that interesting. But, you know, it makes up for it with some really good kills. It is, it is an enjoyable movie. It is a fun movie. It is not as good as The Burning. The Burning is like an actually good slasher, which is so incredibly rare. Like, most slashers, if, if I like a slasher, it's probably just because it's fun. It's because I just enjoy it. I, I'm never gonna, like, defend it as a good movie. There are a few I think are good movies, and The Burning is the rare one where I'm like, yes, this is a good movie. But Madman's fun, you know, if you like slashers, definitely check out Madman. Um, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff going on in Madman. Um, apparently they wanted to, like, reboot this movie, uh, that, uh, back in, like, 2015. Um... That hasn't happened yet, not not that I'm aware of. I don't know, maybe they did, but it can't, can't be as good as this. It can't be as good as the 80s movie. I don't know, something, something about horror movies today. They're too clean, they're too sterile, and that works for some of them. Some of them are okay, clean and sterile, but you can't do, you can't do Madman now. Madman's not, Mad, Madman needs the grime of the 80s. Yeah, Mad Madman's fun. I enjoy Madman. I'm not gonna argue it's a good movie. Um, even by slasher standards, it's a little slow. But I don't know. It's it's got its moments. It's it's definitely worth watching. If you're looking for like Thanksgiving slashers, definitely I would rank this higher than like Home Sweet Home. Um, not as good as Blood Rage. Blood Rage is definitely the one you want to go for. If you, if you just need one Thanksgiving slasher, uh, Blood Rage. Definitely Blood Rage. So last time I asked which movie you regret seeing most. Kind of as a joke on the fact that I, I regret watching Thanks Killing 3, but honestly I don't. It's... It's fascinating, if nothing else. It's not good. It's not fun. It's hard to talk about, but... It's interesting. It's something. What movie do I regret watching the most? Maybe... Meet the Spartans? I do hate that movie. Um... I, there was like a period... Like, uh, in, in high school, you know, when I was first like getting into bad movies, I was looking for like any sources I could for bad movies, and I, I watched a bunch of movies on the IMDb Bottom 100, Kind of like thinking like, ooh, I'm going to watch all the movies on the IMDb Bottom 100. And eventually I just stopped because I'm like, it's not fun. They're not even fun bad movies. Most of the movies on the IMDb Bottom 100 are really painful. There's a few gems in there, but the few gems in there you could easily find from other sources. Right? Nothing... No nothing in... The IMDb bot. N nothing is good simply for being in the IMDb bottom 100. And a lot of it's boring, right? Uh, and, and a lot of it's painful. A lot of it's more than boring. A lot of it's painful. You know, I sat through fucking fat slags 
and surf school and uh, National Lampoon's Pledge This, and I'm like, ooh, oh. Yeah, these deserve to be on the IMDb bottom 100 because they're just painful. They're painful, right? They IMDb needs a separate list for, like, funny bad movies, right? Because Birdemic and uh, a Rotor are also on the bottom 100. And, like, these are fun movies. <laughs> like, I, I enjoy both of those movies, so... I don't know. It's, uh... Difficult waters to navigate on the IMDb bottom 100. Uh, for a while, the lowest rated movie was Super Baby's Baby Geniuses 2, which I didn't agree with at all. It was better than the first Baby Geniuses. Uh, and even Baby Geniuses was better than some of the movies on the IMDb bottom 100. I believe now the lowest rated movie is Disaster Movie, which is a movie I haven't watched and a movie I am avoiding watching. It is the only movie I am actively avoiding watching. Like, I, I'm, I'm a guy who watches, like, fucking everything, and I'm like, you know what, I haven't liked a single one of the other things from the people that made Disaster Movie. I hated Epic Movie, I hated Meet the Spartans, and Disaster Movie is worse? No thanks. Boy, I'm gonna fuck up pronouncing this. The in Aisha? The in Aisha? Go with that. Uh, I have watched a whole lot of utterly cringe-inducingly bad movies, but the only one I can say for certain I regret ever seeing has to be the massive dump Shyamalan took on my favorite series of all time with The Last Airbender. I can tolerate the worst bad B-movies by either laughing at it or drinking enough to block it out, or both, but that one left me in tears for all the wrong reasons. Uh... Yeah, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> there's no reason to watch Last Airbender. Just just watch the TV show. Just watch the TV show. It has no point in existing. It's, it's really boring. It does a bad job adapting the story. Just watch the TV show, man. I know the TV show's longer, but trust me, it's worth your time. John August dropped a lot of them here. Transformers The Last Night. I think that's the one I didn't watch. That's the fifth one, right? I still haven't seen the fifth one. Um, I definitely regret two and three. And then I saw four in theaters for some reason. Don't know why. <laughs> one of my friends wanted to see it, and I'm like, it's okay. I don't know why two and three were bad. Four was better. It was much more tolerable than two and three. Um, mostly because they replaced the main character with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, the entire Star Wars tri sequel trilogy, that I think is unfair. I liked the first two. I, re I regret seeing Episode Nine, but really I more regret that Episode Nine exists. I regret that Episode Nine has kind of ruined two otherwise enjoyable movies by, by just not giving them a satisfying conclusion, but... I don't know, maybe I do regret the whole sequel trilogy. It's, it's, it just ends. It ends so poorly, and now it's like... That makes going back to 7 and 8 so much harder. Nomeo and Juliet. Jungle Cruise. Pixels. Um, Nomeo and Juliet, I've seen. It went in one ear and out the other. Jungle Cruise totally skipped. Pixels I saw in theaters, I think. Um, I don't... I don't hate it. It's it's far from the worst Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's not good. It's it's really not good. Uh, most of the DCEU, most of the MCU. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> the MCU definitely has more highlights than the DCEU. Um, but they... they Here's the thing. The MCU, I would argue, has very few bad movies. There's there's Hulk, there's Iron Man 2 and Iron Man 3, and and Ant-Man kind of pisses me off just because of how, how they did Edgar Wright dirty. I don't know that it's actually a bad movie. Also Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron was bad. But other than those, mostly what it has is boring movies. I'm just like, okay, that was... Okay, that's... Okay, that's the movie. 
DCEU has some, like, bad movies. Uh, both Amazing Spider-Man films. I, I fucking... I saw both of them in theaters, and I hated both of them, and I, I blame my friend Kim for this. Both of them I went to see because of Kim. Uh, Men Behind the Sun? I haven't seen it. Although I've... I, th I think I've heard of the like, good things about Men Behind the Sun. <laughs> Robotics the movie, understandable. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, I kind of liked... I kind of liked Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Not all of it. There were some segments that weren't good. But the first segment's really good. I really like the first segment. I, I think it's worth watching at, at least for the first segment. You can stop after that one. Um, there's, there's one or two other that are fun, but by the end of it, most of the segments are pretty boring. And Chicken Little, uh, just to name a few. Um, assuming he means the, the Disney Chicken Little. Um, I barely remember that fucking movie from when I was a kid. It's Aliens. Chicken Little is worried about the sky falling and it turns out to be Aliens. Um... Oh, the one I regret not watching is the 1982 classic, Treasure Planet, uh, coming from behind the Iron Curtain. Of course, uh, we all love the, the Russian movie from the 80s, Treasure Planet. Great film. Uh, John Cleveland says, I regret paying to see both Jeepers Creepers and Highlander Endgame in theaters. Um, Highlander Endgame... That checks out. That makes sense to me. Now, I'm kind of going to assume the reason he regrets watching Jeepers Creepers, paying to watch Jeepers Creepers, is because uh, Jeepers, the director's a creeper. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, Jeepers Creepers is fine. I didn't like it that much, but I, it's fine. I don't regret watching it. I would probably regret giving the director money. He also says he regrets not being in the trauma film Poultry Geist, which was being filmed right up the street from his college dorm. Uh, he, he was going to go see if he could be an extra, but he never did. That's that's unfortunate. I, I would definitely do what I could to be in a trauma movie. I love trauma. So I'm trying to remember. Last year for Christmas, did I ask what your favorite Christmas movie was? Because... Did I ask favorite Christmas movie, or did I ask favorite non-traditional Christmas movie? Because those are very different questions. I guess... I guess I'm gonna ask, what's your favorite non-traditional Christmas movie? You know, the, the stuff where you have to debate with people, like, oh, does that even count as a Christmas movie? It's like, eh, it takes place on Christmas. What's your favorite, like, technically that's a Christmas movie movie? To start us off, we are going to watch the, the Elliot Gould, Christopher Plummer crime movie, The Silent Partner. Um, fun little Christmas crime movie. After that, we're gonna watch Elves, which I believe was recommended last year. Uh... Was it Lino? Did Lino recommend elves? I'll put the comment here on screen. And then, uh, I don't know. You guys want to watch Die Hard? It's, uh, it's my show. We're going to watch Die Hard. Let's watch Die Hard. That's our Christmas triple feature for next time. Um, like we did last year, I'm going to be skipping out on the last week of the year for Christmas. So this is a Christmas triple feature. Uh, until then, Merry Christmas, I guess. <laughs>